Hey guys, it's Chelsea and happy Halloween. I'm hopefully going to be uploading this on Halloween. Um, but yeah, so happy Halloween. Make sure you guys are nice and safe out there if you're going trick-or-treating or going to a party or anything like that. Just be safe. There's so much crazy shit going on in the world that I don't want anything happening to you guys. And tonight would be the night it would happen because it's that's just the way it is, holidays and shit. So anyway, be safe out there. Have a great Halloween. Um, for Halloween this year, I was actually this kind of like skeleton girl thing. I'm going to try and insert a photo. Please let me remember to insert a photo. Um of me and my little skeleton outfit looking cute um, that's what I was for Halloween and then I'm actually going to work today to pass out candy and I will be just a simple Minnie Mouse I can't do like a full-out cute costume or anything there so I'm just gonna be wearing like Minnie Mouse ears and like black shirt and stuff um, but anyway so that's what's going on today and I thought I would sit down and have a little video for you guys <laughs> have a little video um, you know bring you guys a video that I think you've been wanting I'm not entirely sure I'm looking for feedback here I feel like the kind of the most that you guys reach back out to me um, you know give me feedback towards my videos are my dating videos I get a lot of emails private messages actual comments and things like that on those videos and it's interesting because those are my most raw unedited you know very real things and I feel like you guys kind of appreciate that and I feel like a lot of you are in the dating scene or you know are in a relationship or things like that and are just looking for a good old dating advice or story time or things like that kind of video so I wanted to create somewhat of a series I'm not sure how long it's gonna go if it's even gonna go past this video I'd like it too but that's all up to you guys and your views and comments if you like it and your likes um, but I wanted to kind of do a dating series because I think it's when you guys are the most interactive. I think I have a lot to say. I think I've been through a lot. I think I'm definitely one of those people that goes through stuff and, you know, learns from it so that I do not repeat myself. I'm not one of those people that's going to, you know, continuously put myself in bad situations and things like that. I'm very aware. I look at things. I take it for what it is. And I learn from it because that's what you're supposed to do. Um, so I feel like I'm good at advice and I wanted to start kind of like a dating advice series so I thought I would kick it off with this video which is just gonna be a simple keys to a happy healthy good relationship and um, I just compiled a list the list is a bit personal you know I can't capture every single thing there is out there it's simple it's personal but I thought it would be good to kind of let you guys know so that if you're in a relationship make sure these things are going on make sure you know you're happy and things like that and if you're going to be getting into a relationship or, or in the dating scene that you're looking out for these things as well so anyway let's get started I have a little list on my phone and we will just go right through so the first thing that I want to talk about because it was the biggest fail <laughs> in my last relationship is understanding that things are not always going to be good things are not always going to be happy and great and you know lightweight and things like that if you're in a real relationship a real something that could go somewhere um, there's gonna be bad times there's gonna be times when one of you fucks up or says something wrong doesn't do something um, all things combined cheating whatever happens I don't know about cheating <laughs> but if you could work through that I don't know but um, let's keep it at just simple things that are gonna go wrong and it's gonna cause arguments and you have to be aware that that is going to happen I feel you know in my little in my last relationship and in my little kind of dipping my toes in the dating scene that I've done um, since I have been single um, guys are very you know at the the moment you start showing kind of like real stuff like they do something and you're like yo that wasn't cool you know just kind of not being like oh well good times whatever you know not um, being all happy-go-lucky and actually being like listen like that wasn't okay they get a little whoa you know like this is real and a lot of guys kind of like to jump ship when that happens that happened to me like twice since I've been single and um, you know the actual date didn't even follow through because of that and then just looking at my past relationship that was one of our biggest problems is understanding that things you know just because things are bad doesn't mean they're gonna be bad forever it's normal to have little fights and if the bad times outweigh the good times then yes I understand that things aren't good here but if it's a lot of good times with a few little bad times sprinkled in there and maybe sometimes the bad times are all at once sometimes they're sprinkled sometimes you don't have any but the fact is that you're going to have bad times and fights and issues and problems and meh and you know things like that you're if you're living together you're gonna want to leave the house 
Um, but the thing is you always come right back and um, don't let that be a relationship ender for you. You know, just take everything for what it is, be aware, know your limits and know what you can deal with and what you can't deal with. Sorry, that was just like the most random call from this random number and I thought I'd answer because I never do and it was just silence. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, just understand that things are going to happen and you have to get through them and that kind of leads into my next point which is be willing, let me get the exact words, to listen and work through problems. This is very important because... Um, in relationships, especially my last one, there is a lot of sweeping things under the rug and that will only harm your relationship, not in the moment, but later on because, you know, I think everyone should know by now, bottling things up and not working through stuff and just pretending like it didn't happen is a very harmful way to go about things because that problem is still there, that issue is still there, that moment is still in the back of that person's head and it just hasn't been dealt with yet and it's going to have to be dealt with. You know, one of you is going to get drunk one night and bring it up and then it turns into something that it shouldn't have. Um, you know, just whatever. Like, you found out your boyfriend did something and didn't tell you about it. And then you, he's just like, don't worry about it. Like, you know, that was a month ago. That was a week ago. Whatever. It's fine. We'll work through it. I've learned my lesson. It's not happening again. I love you. Well, you know, in the back of your mind, that's always going to be there. And you need to sit there and talk about it. Why didn't you tell me? What's the problem here? Are you wanting to see other people? Like, why are you lying to me? You know, you know, honesty is the best policy. And so yeah to be in a relationship to be happy to be healthy you have to be willing to work through and listen to somebody when they come to you with problems because don't you want someone that's going to be straight up with you and wants to work through things with you why would you want to be with someone that wants to sit there and bottle everything up and not deal with real problems that just kind of ens like ensues that you don't want a real relationship if that's what you want because you know you need to be willing to listen and you need to be willing to get through stuff and um yeah so <laughs> that's those two kind of tie in together um so the third thing is to give attention when needed even if you have other obligations still make them feel like they're number one so this is another big thing i feel like this is all the problems in my last <laughs> relationship um but these are all things I'm working on now. Um, to give attention when needed and even if you have other obligations. This is a big thing because I feel like a lot of people, you know, we all got shit going on in our lives. You know, I have school and work and family and friends. And if I want to be in a relationship, I have to try and fit someone in on all that. And that's something that I'm willing to take on. Some people aren't. That's Those are the people that don't want to be in a relationship. There are other obligations in life come first but if you want to be in a relationship or are in a relationship with somebody they should be willing to because they want you supposedly they should be willing to kind of fit you in where necessary and give you attention when you need it and there's a huge misconception of giving attention like you know physically like physically being there and physically making someone number one like that's not exactly what I mean here I don't mean that we need to see each other every day I don't mean that you need to cancel that thing with your friend to see me that's not what I mean just make me feel like I'm still number one while you're doing those things while you're at work school text me throughout the day let me know what you're doing like make me feel like I'm number one and you know if something does cancel or something happens make you know invite me there like invite me to do something be like oh man you know I didn't wake up in time for school like you want to go get breakfast with me or something and then I'll go later or something like that you know just always be willing to make that person feel like they're number one even if you have other shit going on in your life you know never use school and work as an excuse to not make someone your priority because you don't have to physically make someone your priority all the time just make them feel like their priority even if it's over the phone you know FaceTime and all those type of video calls you can video chat on Facebook on the app that's awesome those things can make people feel included if you know while you're if you're both in school so you can't see each other a lot you know you can both FaceTime for a little bit in between your studies and whatnot and it still gives each other attention even though it can't be physical and it still makes you feel like a priority no one wants to feel like they're a back burner to school or a back uh, a back burner a back burner to work or anything like that they want to feel important and it's very simple to do that you don't have to do that much to do that you don't have to wine and dine someone every day to make them feel like they're a priority you just have to do the little things the little things stick out more than anything just the little like random bringing the flowers or even simpler just a random text hey I'm thinking about you I love you whatever um, those are the things that matter <laughs> okay and also this is 
you know, this is something that I wanted to say, but there's so many different if, ands, or buts to this, so I'm just gonna say it and then take it for what it is. I personally feel like if you're dating someone and this is not long distance, this is not internet relationship, this is something like you guys live near each other or what have you, like um, traditional kind of relationship style, this, this person lives in your town or whatever, goes to school with you, what have you, works with you. I think that at least once a week you should be spending time together. I feel like, you know, obviously there could be someone goes out of town or, you know, there's long distance relationships and this does not qualify for that. It kind of can as far as like a video call or something. But, um, you know, I think at least spending time once a week together is good. I think, you know, especially if you're both trying to be independent and living your own lives, which is kind of the relationship that I want now. I don't want to be stuck up someone's ass anymore. That's very kind of childish. I want something more adult, whereas we live our own lives, we do our own days, and then we get together at the end of the week or in the middle of the week and talk about it and talk about the things that we're doing and, you know, class, school, work, and oh my gosh, my friends, and <laughs> all that kind of stuff. And I feel like once a week is a good gauge for couples to kind of get together and talk about what's been going on the end of the week, preferably, so you can talk about your whole week and everything that's happened. And I definitely think if you're in a relationship, that person should be making specific time, not just like little here and there, but specific time for you at least once a week, whether that be a hangout, whether it be virtual, what have you. I think once a week is good for adult relationships. Obviously, if you're younger and you have a lot more time on your hands maybe you could see each other more but that's just like a good gauge I feel like if a person can't do that for you why are you with them like honestly you're never gonna see each other you're never gonna what have you <laughs> so yeah um next thing oh this is kind of I don't know I don't know how many people are going to actually deal with this but I also wanted to say it because this is something that I see um a lot of issues with it's to understand if your partner has any prior ailments and by ailments I mean depression anxiety and things like that I think it's very important going into something or if you're in something in a relationship to know what that person is going through because that is going to affect your relationship as much as I would like to say my anxiety isn't going to affect my relationships it does it affect it affects my relationships with my friends it affects my relationship with my family and it will most certainly affect the relationship with the person I'm most closest to and I think it's very important to be like open and honest if you're dealing with any of those things because it will only cause problems down the road if that person doesn't know that you suffer with that and you just you know have a panic attack and just completely go off the deep end and this person's like what this bitch is crazy but if you know, if they know that you're dealing with something and can have some respect for that, then I think it'll just make things smooth and easier. I think it's, you know, you don't have to necessarily on the first day be like, I suffer with anxiety, but I think just kind of sprinkle it in there, you know. I'm Anxiety and depression are like an epidemic nowadays. It's literally everywhere. So I don't, I mean, honestly, every person should be able to kind of know someone or be able to semi-relate. And even if they can't, they should be able to respect you and, you know, do what they can to kind of learn about it and learn about your specific depression and your specific anxiety and how to help you and make you feel better but any other ailments if you have an illness or you know like me I have psoriasis I have scoliosis that doesn't necessarily affect my relationships but it could you know and um, these are just things that you need to be open and honest about because they will come up they will affect your relationship and there's no sense of hiding them um, and also I don't know <laughs> I don't know where I was gonna go with that but anyway and last but not least this is going to be my thing I'm going to close on is you need to get out and do stuff. There are too many couples that when they do get together, it's just like, you know, it's sex, it's just laying in a bed, it's just cuddling, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it's important in a relationship to get out and make memories and have good times and friends because that is the shit you are going to remember. That is the shit when you are going through it with somebody, you know, like, arguing a lot you're gonna be like oh my god but remember when we went to Disney we just had that amazing time like I love you so much you're not gonna be like oh yeah when we cuddled and you know the sex was good like no you're they're gonna be like you know you need to get out there you need to make memories have good times get other people involved do group activities do stuff that you both like if you're together you should be liking somewhat of the same things and have somewhat of the same interests if you both like go ride a fucking horse like do something I don't know why that came to my head 
but go do something be active be out there together and um, I think it makes people closer I think that it's better than just a lot of relationships nowadays that are just spent indoors watching movies and cuddling and although that's nice and that's great and I love that but you need to go make memories even if you're not you don't have a lot of money just going on a walk together in nature, you know, go to a trail. There's shit that's free. You can go to the beach. I mean, you have to pay for parking, but generally free. Um, and things like that, that, you know, you can do and make memories and have a good time and take pictures and post them and just be cute and <laughs> things like that. That's also very important as well. Um, so anyway, that is going to conclude my video. Of course, there are a million other things I could name, but these are just kind of some more personalized stuff that I think other people could benefit from knowing as well. So let me know what you think about this video or me making this a series in the comments below. I will see you guys next time here on Life of Chelsea, and bye bye